Choosing Love by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 4. Before I get started, guys, from this chapter onwards for this arc of the story, there are heavy themes of psychological and emotional and verbal abuse directed towards Mal by the character of Natalie. So just to give you guys a trigger warning, okay? This might get a bit nasty. I'll tell you which chapter it stops at in another video or maybe at the end of this one. Anyway, here we go. Mal made her way down the hall to her meeting with Natalie. She wasn't exactly looking forward to it, but she had been the one to cut their meeting short the other day. It was only fair that she rescheduled. Gods, it was so hard to believe that it had only been a few days since Uma, Hadi, Harry and Gil had arrived in Oridon. It was honestly like a dream. Okay, so maybe Uma needed to lay off Evie a bit, especially since Daniel was still in the medical coma. And Harry seemed a bit too determined to get Jay to skip raw practice to spar with him. And honestly, Gil seemed to be more clingy than Carlos had been when they had first arrived in Oridon. The only one who seemed to be adjusting without issue had, surprisingly, been Hattie. He had been fine adjusting to classes, and he had already made friends with Melody and Alexandria Charming, Chad Charming's youngest sister. It wasn't that odd, though. Back on the aisle, his best friends were Dizzy Tremaine and Celia Facilier. Her baby brother was certainly popular with the ladies, and she and Uma had whacked Harry over their head when he had pointed that out. Maybe it's the fact that he's half Oridon, Mal thought as she made her way to the room she was going to meet Natalie in. After all, Mum told him stories about Oridon since the day he was born. Plus, with how Uma and I worked to keep his innocence intact, he's more Oridon than an isle, but he's no prissy prince. Hello, Mal, Natalie said, and Mal blinked, having not realised that the blonde was in the room already. The other woman was thin and wore a muted pink sundress that seemed to almost blend into the walls. Mel felt Natalie's eyes go up and down her body, as if taking stock of her. Hello, Natalie, Mel nodded, feeling no shame in what she was wearing. It was her usual outfit of leather pants, purple boots, and a purple shirt under her leather jacket. I'm sorry for being late, there was a bit of an issue with my bathroom door. Clearly. Natalie said, and Mal could feel her eyes move on to the one blue smudge she couldn't remove. That normally would have been hidden by her hair, since it was right by her ear, but of course it was on full display. Of course, the day she had woken up late, had a meeting, would have been the day Uma decided to rig a smoke bomb to launch the minute Evie went into the bathroom. I'm going to kill you? Oh, come on, Molly, don't be like that. Uma said as Mal glared at Uma, her face covered in teal smoke as she stood in the open doorway to the shared bathroom. You've been here three days! How in Dad's name have you been able to make a smoke bomb in that short amount of time? Uma shrugged. Farah and I were bored. And then those Amir and Akio blokes showed up and showed us around some more. So in exchange we taught them how to make smoke bombs. Mal froze. You did what? Taught Amir and Akio how to make smoke bombs. Oh, gods, Mal sighed and rolled her eyes. I told you back when I brought Ben to the aisle before his coronation that Amir and Akio were like Harry and Jay. Why in the world would you give them another way to be like them? Because they asked, Uma shrugged again and Mal sighed. You'd better be thankful I'm on my way to a meeting, otherwise I'd be wiping the floor with you and sparring, Uma. Is that any way to talk to your captain? When I'm co-captain? Yes! Yes it is! Now I just need to pray this stuff will come off with just water! Mal gave a small laugh to try to cut the tension in the room. I'm sorry, by the way, for cutting our meeting short the other day. I had a family coming in that I hadn't seen in a while. Oh yes, King Ben did state that you would have relatives coming in from the aisle. Natalie nodded. I take it that one of those relatives is responsible for that smudge? Yeah, Mal nodded. Natalie shook her head. I know, we've only just met. But I would advise you to spend more time with your family not from the Isle. After all, as a daughter of Hades, you have family all over Oridon. Why not the daughter of Hercules? You two should be around the same age. Mal rolled her eyes. I do spend time with my cousins on the Oridon side of things. But I spent my whole life around Uma. I know, I know. 
Natalie said in a strange tone of voice that Mal honestly couldn't put her finger on, but it rubbed her the wrong way. But you wouldn't want something to happen that might embarrass anyone, would you? Mal tilted her head. What do you... Now, as your handler, I'll be in charge of making sure you have the skills to make it in the royal court. Natalie said, cutting Mal off before she could finish her question. That'll mean meetings, lessons, and of course you'll be arranging a tour of the kingdom and be responsible for planning cotillion. Isn't there a committee? Yes, of course. But you would be the head of that committee, and making the final decisions on things like lighting, decorations, party favours, etc. Princess Audrey has had the spot previously, but as she is no longer dating King Ben... Oh, God, I've got a sleeping banshee fangirl as my handler. Mal thought, then inwardly shook her head. Okay, you don't know that. After all, she has only mentioned Audrey once. And really, did she say anything that wasn't true? Audrey is no longer dating Ben. Natalie turned around and picked her book up off the desk behind her before turning it back to Mal. This will be the most important thing you'll ever use, she said. King of Ben's council has everything in place for your schedule. Okay, but what about classes? Mal asked. That's factored in. Ben said he'd block off time for me to practice my magic, Mal said, and unless she was mistaken, Natalie seemed to roll her eyes. Yes, yes, King Ben reached out and we've blocked out three hours of a week for you to practice your magic. Mal smiled as she saw those hours were in fact blocked out, highlighted in purple. If Ben knows about this planner, I have no doubt he's the one who blocked out these hours. She thought, all in all, it wasn't as bad as she thought. A few more lessons were normal, and she wasn't looking forward to the meetings about Cotillion. But, all in all, getting used to the royal court wasn't as bad as she had been imagining. Now, these meetings are subject to change, Natalie told her as Mal thumbed through the planner. I would suggest you read up on the royal court and the proper way to act. Oh, my mother's already done. While I am sure Maleficent has taught you many things, Mal, Auradon is different than the Isle. Natalie said as she plopped a stack of books onto one of the desks that was in the room. Lady Persephone's my mother, Mal stated, noting it was probably one of the few times Natalie hadn't cut her off in the conversation. Of course, of course, Natalie nodded, as if she was humouring Mal. But you did say that you lived with Maleficent for six years. That's what I understood from your speech at the coronation. Well, yes, but... So, like I said, I'm sure Maleficent taught you many things... But Auradon differs wildly from the Isle, Natalie stated. It'll benefit you to spend time with people who seem to already grasp that concept. Mal sighed. Thank you for your suggestion, Natalie. But I'm not going to just kick my friends to the side because they've made a bad impression on you. Ben likes them, and so do the friends I've made here in Auradon. Opening up her planner, Mal pretended to notice the meeting. If you'll excuse me, it looks as though I've got a meeting scheduled with Ben. Very well, Natalie sighed. I'll see you at your charms class. Charms? Am I actually going to learn magic? Mal thought she gathered up the twenty-some books Natalie had given her, plus her new planner. Wait, no. Knowing Orindon, it'll probably be something like how to be a prissy princess. You know, how does Lonnie deal with these people who insist women can only be one way? That being said... Something about how Natalie hadn't believed Mal, when Mal had said Persephone was her mother, had irked the godling. It wasn't the first time she hadn't been believed, and likely it wouldn't be the last. She had publicly announced that Maleficent wasn't her mother. What more did these people want? Besides, hadn't Hercules proven that blood didn't make family? Despite his biological tie to Zeus, Hercules' kids also considered their father's adoptive parents to be their grandparents. Gods, I need to talk to Ben, she muttered out to herself, marching towards Ben's office. Out of the corner of her eye, Mal noticed how people almost seemed to dive out of her way, as if afraid of her. Turning into a dragon at Ben's coronation probably didn't help matters, she thought with an inward sigh. It's only been a month, though. They'll get over it. Before she reached Ben's office, however... Mal was pulled into a nearby alcove. What the hell? Sorry, Rowan said, biting her lip. But we wanted to get your attention. Well, you got it, Mal muttered, then paused. What do you mean, we? 
me, Kitty, Jane, Lonnie, Jordan and Ali. And why did you wanting my attention constitute pulling me into an alcove? So we weren't overheard. I really don't like the sound of that. Kitty chuckled dryly. How familiar are you with the tabloid of the gazelle? Oh, you mean the rag that Ben was so worried about? He told me about a fight he had had with Audrey in case they wrote about an article on me. Because Audrey mentioned my name. Mal scoffed. I'm familiar. Especially since they seem particularly preoccupied with Evie. Well, they seem to have changed focus, Ali said gently, pulling out a copy of that week's edition. It's not Ben, is it? Mal asked. No, no. Lonnie shook her head. Ben's got PR people out of the wazoo to prevent any reports slipping out to the gazelle. Jay? Carlos? Not really the typical subject of the gazelle, Jordan rolled her eyes, since they're not royalty. Mal tilted her head. Well then, I'm lost. Vim is the only one with royal they'd have report on since her mum's triton sister, so she'd be an Atlantean princess, along with being the granddaughter of a god. But she's too new to Oridon. You're on the right track, Mal. Lonnie said, It's you. Me? Mal scoffed. A bit behind the times, aren't they? I'm not exactly news. This... This isn't the first time they've reported on you, Rowan said softly. It's just the first time they've made front page above the fold. Oh, Mal said, and then shook her head. Let me guess. How dare the king date a VK? Does Mal have no shame? Poor Princess Audrey! That sort of thing? Well, that is the usual type of tripe the gazelle produces. It's not what they wrote this time. Ali sighed and then handed Mal the copy of the trash rag. Mal raised an eyebrow and then paused upon seeing the headline. Godling or hatchling? Can one claim Mal isn't Maleficent's daughter? Well, they're stretching. Mal scoffed, conjuring up a fireball and not even giving the rag a second glance as she brought it to Ash. Honestly, if that's the best they can do, it must be an off day for them. We thought that, that wouldn't faze you, Kitty grinned. But we wanted to let you know so you weren't caught unawares. That's happened to us. Well, not Ali, Jordan or Lonnie. Perks of not being a royal, I guess. Ali suggested. Are you going to be okay, Mal? Rowan asked. Mal chuckled. It'll take more than some gossip rag to knock me down. She said, I know whose daughter I am. And it's not the dragons. No one else's opinion matters to me. Good for you, Lonnie said. When Audrey got her first article written about her, she wouldn't stop ranting for a week. Oh yeah, isn't that when you stop being friends with her? Kitty asked and Lonnie shrugged. Wait, you were friends with Sleeping Rat? Mal asked Lonnie in shock. Jane and I both were. Lonnie said. She gave us an ultimatum when she and Ben officially started dating when we were 15. The only way we could stay friends was to become friends with her. And by friends, I'm sure she meant lackey. Kitty said, rolling her eyes. Gods, what my brother sees in her, I'll never know. Still better about the kitty litter in your locker? Rowan asked. Of course! All because my name is Kitty! If Audrey actually had a brain, she'd know that it's just a nickname. My full name is Catherine. Just like my father's full name is Christopher, Rupert, Windermere, Vladimir, Carl, Alexander, Francois, Reginald, Lancelot, Herman, Gregory, James, Charming. But everyone just calls him Kit. And I thought my middle name was bad. Herman? Mal muttered to herself after taking a minute to process the full name of Prince Charming. Well, King Charming, technically, since the Charmings are ruled Charmington. And suddenly your brother's C name makes so much more sense. Jordan told Kitty, considering your mum's true name is Ella, after all. Yet your sister's L and A names make no sense. Rowan shook her head. Alex is named after Nana, Kitty stated and then noticed Mal's confused look. My dad's mum. Lucy, on the other hand, was just because it means light in French, and the sun began to rise when she was born. And you? Mal asked. I'm a Tufa. Kitty grinned. Catherine was my mum's mother's name, but my nickname comes from my dad's nickname. Mal smiled softly. Must be nice to be named after a parent and not feel ashamed about it. So, if your dad's got a mouthful of a name, I'm guessing you do too? No! Kitty chuckled. 
Mum prevented it with Chad's birth, since she wanted to be the one to raise us and not have an army of nursemaids and governesses. How did Chad turn out to be like himself then? A lifetime of being around Audrey, Kitty said with a shrug. But we clearly interrupted something since you seem to be in a hurry. Oh, it was nothing. I was just going to see Ben. Oh! Lonnie, Jane and Ali squeaked. Kitty, Rowan and Jordan winced and rubbed their ears. Yeah, you don't do that ever again, Rowan told the three girls. At least give us some warning, Kitty added. I swear my sisters have less air-piercing squeals than you three. Lonnie rolled her eyes. Sorry for being excited. Besides, Ben and Mel are so cute together, Ali stated, bouncing a little. When they're talking to each other, it's like they're in their own little wonderland. Mal rolled her eyes. Okay, okay. Chill out, the three of you. Nothing major was going to happen. I was just going to stop by and say hi. He's in his office right now working on something. Mal, do you know the number of times Audrey used to stop by Ben's office just to say hi? I'm guessing since Audrey didn't even know where his office was until he told me and the others when we were arriving, that number is zero. You would be correct. So as Ben's best female friend, and practically as head of security amongst the students, Jordan smirked. Lonnie nodded. Yes, and that. You're good for Ben. The point is I'm trying to make. You make him happy. Just know this. You hurt him. I hurt you. You're telling this to a girl who can turn into a dragon? Don't care. I've got Musha on my side, plus my mum's lucky cricket. Mal smirked. Good answer, Lonnie. But I'm not going to hurt Ben. So, now that we've gotten that older sister speech out of the way, should we let you go and continue to Ben, or... Don't trail off like that, Kitty. You know how that intrigues me. Kitty chuckled. Lonnie told us about how you were going to whip her into shape for all. You want to head down to the gym? Show us if that's true? Or if you're just blowing smirk up Lonnie's ass? I do believe I've begun to corrupt one or a Donian. Mal smirked. No, Jane shook her head. She's always been like that. How? I've been friends with Chad practically since birth. Jane chuckled. Fairy godmother's daughter? Our stories are practically connected. Mal rolled her eyes. Well, then I thank Zeus I was born on the Isle. Otherwise, I'd be connected to Sleeping Banshee. Akio? Lonnie asked. Who else? As fascinating as this conversation is, we're burning sunlight, people. Kitty said, tapping her foot. I still have my homework to do for my bad fairies class. What do you have to do? Jordan asked. A five-page paper on identifying bad fairies. Kitty sighed. Mal chuckled. You need any help? I've got two identifiers for you. They have horns and are called Maleficent. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna fly, but thanks, Mal. Kitty snorted in amusement. So, come on! If we go now, we can get some sword work time in before Chad and the other world members take over the gym. And then you'll have no choice but to write that paper. Jane said, I'll come with you guys. I need to talk to the new head cheerleader. Why? I'm thinking about joining the squad, Jane said as they made their way to the gym. I was the mascot, but it's time for me to start retiring that. Mal tilted her head. Wait, isn't isn't Audrey the head cheerleader? Well, she was, Rowan told her. My sister Rose is on the squad, and they said after the way she acted at the championship tourney game, announcing Chad as her boyfriend three minutes after Ben broke it off with her, the squad basically kicked her out. Whoa. Mal said softly. She hadn't really been expecting that. Then again, maybe it should have been a sign when the cheerleader started dancing with the tawny team after Audrey stormed off the field. Kelsey's the new head cheerleader, Jane said. Cusco and Melina's daughter, she added. You guys do know you don't need to say who everyone's related to, right? Mal asked, rolling her eyes. Sometimes it's more for our benefit, Jordan said with a shrug. Like with the kids of the Seven Dwarves. There's Doug, sure, but there's also Gordon, Bashful Jr., Sleepy Jr., Derek, Shy, Krabby, Hap, Cheerful, Snoozy, Doc the Second, and Gazundite. What did Gordon do to get a relatively normal name? You know, I'm not sure. 
Jordan chuckled. Now let's get the sword work done before Kitty has a conniption. Mal chuckled as she unsheathed her sword. As the sword work went underway, on the other side of the school, a different kind of work was also getting started, as Ben began to start digging through the files for the food deliveries to the aisle. I've got to look into digitising these records, he thought with a sigh as he set a timer on his phone. He knew full well that Mal, Akio, Lonnie or Amir were dragging out of his office if he didn't leave to get a full night's sleep. He also knew that, at least from Mal, he didn't want her to know. At least not right away. His girlfriend deserved answers. And who better to get them for her than the son of the man who was the reason she was on the aisle in the first place? End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this one. So this chapter is essentially in three parts and I actually quite like this. Though Natalie, you'll want to wring her neck by the end of this and I already partially want to. Think of her and Leah as kind of like Umbridge, in a way. Using political intrigue to get what they want, even if it is completely deplorable. And you'll see what I mean quite soon. That links into what Ben's doing. Tracking down as to why they've got rotten food on the aisle. But the thing I love about this chapter the most is how much the girls have Mal's back. We haven't really seen her interact with most of these people right now. Jane a few times, and of course Lonnie. I hope you guys liked the voices I gave those girls. Kitty I tried to make sarcastic but hi. Lonnie's got a richer voice. And Ali, because she is meant to be Alice in Wonderland's daughter, I tried to make her more enunciating. Basically, I was trying to exaggerate my own English accent because of how British a story Alice in Wonderland is. <laughs> and I do, I just love Jane. I love that she wants to be a cheerleader. She and Carlos aren't as prevalent in this as they are in the original, but they're so sweet and they're in the background of this the whole time and I just love it. I'll comment on that literally every time they're brought up, so I don't care if you guys don't like that. It's just my... One of my OTPs, okay. Mal and Ben, Uma and Harry, Gil and Makaria are pretty cute later on down the line. Frankly, just the ships in this just make me squeal. They're so sweet. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. You guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.